Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. It is the close of the meeting, the close of the day. No matter what time zone you are watching this in, it doesn't really matter. It's a time when we say goodbye to that which has occurred, which is a series of messages that try to convey the compassion and the facts of things that are not normally seen or understood. It talks about a creative source which is bigger than you were ever told it was. The potentials and possibilities of a much larger galaxy than you ever thought was there. The idea, perhaps, that seems so eye-rolling and sparks such controversy that perhaps there are those out there who love you and know you who may have even had the seeds of your DNA. All of these things that are so outlandish today in a century or so will be common knowledge. This is the way of it, dear ones, and you've seen it. You have seen it even in your own societies that the things that you thought were crazy are today your science. The things that you thought never would happen are happening. The things you were told couldn't happen are happening. And so it goes this way. This is the leading edge at this moment of potentials, of many things that are not yet of fruition, but are coming. We have told you that this may be the beginning of inventions that have been waiting until things settled. This may be the beginning of new thought. There are so many who predicted issues at this time, not necessarily biological ones. There are those who have predicted that there would be a thing that would bring the earth to its knees and so many felt that that would be terrorism or, or a war or perhaps a stock market crash that couldn't be recovered from and it wasn't any of those. There is no model in economics for the recovery of a virus, a pandemic. There just isn't. And yet there are all of those telling you how it's going to work and how it isn't going to work and, and the naysayers. And there is no model, dear ones, no model for what is taking place, how fast it can recover, what the consciousness will do. But there is such a willingness, a willingness to get out and start again. There are those who are, are craving to be in a crowd and hold hands with everyone and hug everyone because you couldn't. And now you miss it. Now you understand. Now you understand. Oh, but there's so much more. I say it again. There is no recovery model for the stock market. There is no recovery model for the economics for a pandemic. And it will surprise you. It will create another model. Don't let those who have no idea and are just guessing, strike fear into your heart that this will last and last and last, or that you'll never recover, or it'll be another depression of 29, and that it'll take dozens of years. They are invested in giving you fear. They really truly are. And their reward, dear ones, is more people will tune in do you realize that? The more fearful it is, the more people will tune in. Then they have an opportunity to sell things to you. This is the way of it and has been the way of it. And even that is going to temper itself. When there is a day when the media will have to explain why they didn't give the rest of the story, why they didn't give hope, why they didn't show some of the things that were always happening. It would put a smile on your face during times when everyone was crying. There are things yet to come. 
There's good news ahead. There's joy ahead. There's recovery ahead. This particular channel, I want to be a parable. A different kind of a parable that we've given before. We're going to call it the parable of the hidden road. And in order to do this correctly, I want to remind Americans of the history of their country at a profound time of discovery, of hardship. It was a time when you were simply moving west through the forests, through the meadows, through the streams, through the canyons, in order to discover what was there. Think of a time when the continent was just being discovered. And there were those who would venture out from the east, not knowing what they would, what they would encounter at all. There were a number of explorers, some famous ones, who would go to the west and discover unbelievable things. And in order to do this, they had to go through the, the brambles and the, the forests and the cut their way and carve their way through the thickest of the thick simply to make a few miles a day a number of kilometers here a number there some of them were gone for years simply to chart what was there two of them were called Lewis and Clark if you take a look at that and you take a look at them and what they wrote and what they did and how long they were out it was astonishing one of the most favorite is them coming across the Grand Canyon now you know that historians will tell you that the Spanish did as well they came across the Grand Canyon and said it was an uncrossable place they turned around and went back Lewis and Clark did not. They went to the ocean. Then they turned around and came back, and the report started coming in. And over a period of time, years and years, you started to see those venturing west for a better life. And they had no idea what they were in for as they ventured west. So many stories, so many books written, so many talking about what they had to go through simply to travel with a wagon and the horses. Most people who were not there don't even realize, you know, they did not ride in the wagons. The wagons carried the supplies. They walked to the West Coast. They walked to the West Coast. Many along the way who chose to have children knew very much that they should not name a child until the child existed for three months alive. Because the death rate of birth was one in three. Did you think about that? Did you think there was ever a time when the pioneers had those kinds of issues because they wanted to travel? Can you imagine what it took to take a wagon through a forest without paths. What they had to do to find that which is a way around things and how long it might have taken to go up there and down the hills and across the rivers and just to get to that place that they wanted to go to, which was the West. So let's put yourself in their stead at this moment. Let's pretend in this parable you are one of them. It's a hardy lot. You didn't survive unless you were fit. Men and women, children. Picture them for a moment stopping during the day to take a rest. They're going to take a meal. Picture just for a moment that they come across other travelers. But the travelers they come across are different, and they know it. They look different. First of all, they're clean. There's no mud on them. 
Looks like they were just bathed. And there's nothing like that with these travelers. You're lucky if you ever have a bath unless you come across a stream or a lake. The travelers looked different. They were cleaner than they should be to be travelers and they spoke oddly. Some realized quickly that they had run into something that perhaps was magical or some said, well, they are of the forest and finally we're seeing some of the, the elementals. Others said, well, perhaps that they are angelic. And they got to talking to them. And it's interesting what happened immediately in this group of hardy souls that knew their way and their difficulty and had, had charted their way very carefully. They took one look and they said, I'm not going to talk to those people. They're not part of my world. So there are many who did not even want to talk to these travelers, these ones that they had met on the road, and they went their own way. Others stayed for a moment, and they started to ask, who are you really? Why are you so different? And when asked questions, the travelers started talking. Who are you? And they said, we are guides. And they said, well, why are you guides? And why are you here? And they said, we have known of you all this time. You see, we have been traveling with you just a little way away. We've been paralleling your journey. Now, the more savvy of those travelers, the ones who are mapping, and fixing the wagons and all of that said, that's impossible. We would have heard you. We would have known it. We know what it's like to go through these forests. It's difficult. We would have heard that, what you had to do, the breaking of the branches, all of the things. The difficulty would have smelled your fire. If you were, if you were really paralleling us and next to us, we would have known it. And the group that was angelic said nothing until they were asked interesting the phenomenon of communication right away we have spoken of this before they would not explain unless they were asked again they were those who broke off from the conversation and said this is silly talk we've had too much to drink we're going to go and pay attention to what we are here for to go through this difficult reality that we've had and plow through and get to the next place. And yet there were still some who stayed and they asked questions, more questions. Why would we meet you now? Why would you show yourselves now? And that's when these who simply almost glowed, they were so different, stood tall and said to them, because there are different times now. And it's time you saw some things and knew some things that are different from anything you've ever seen before. We are the guides. And if you wish, we'll show you something. We'll show you our path. This was decision time. Now you had some of these hardy folks who broke away and some who stayed being invited to go with them just for a little ways to see something they didn't know about. Again, there were some who broke off and said, it's a trick. This is not real. We've been out here too long. Now, nature is playing tricks on us in a way that could very well take us to an abyss and throw us off a cliff and all of the mythology, all of that that they'd been warned about, all of the fears of what's out there at night, and some of them did not go, but a few did. And the few who did ask these, they say, how far away is it? And, and those who would lead them, these guys, they said, it's not far. It'll only take two hours. Come with us, walk for two hours, it's nothing for you. Let us show you something. 
that you've never seen before. And so they did. So the few went with those who were angelic, those, the guys that they had met, who they still don't know who they are or what they are, couldn't figure it out. They talked differently. They acted differently. They looked different. But they felt safe with them. They walked behind them as the guides walked in front, and they noticed something. They said, we see that you're not having any trouble walking through this thick forest. We are. We are. You're going through the thickest part. And it seems like you're simply walking through the forest like, like it knew you, like it's, it's, it's bending out of the way for you. It's hard to describe. Sometimes it looks like you're walking through a tree. It says, tell us, guides, what is this? And the guide stopped for a moment. And they said, this is one of the issues that you need to know. This forest that you go through, this difficulty that you have chosen for your own path, that which you go through that you say is so thick and so difficult is a partner on this planet. If you knew it was a partner and you treated it as a partner, as you would somebody you're in love with, if you did that, the forest would get out of your way as well. You see, the forest is part of you. More than just beautiful, more than just Mother Earth. It's a partner. This forest gives you your oxygen. You give the forest your carbon dioxide. It's a symbiotic relationship, and without it, you would not exist. And without you, it would not exist. You see, it's a partner of life. This forest allows you to eat from it. It supplies you with food. Later, as you'll recognize, it also will allow you to grow things from its loins. The forest is your partner. It feeds you. You feed it. The forest gives you the water, the fresh water to drink. Gaia, this planet, this earth, is your partner in all things, sustenance, oxygen, food. And then they even added this. The forest gives you the wood for your buildings and for your wagons. And then after a generation or so, you come back and find all the wood is grown back again so that it can do it yet again for your next generation. This is a partner. And that is why you can see us moving through this so easily. The humans were mystified. They'd never heard anything like this, ever. They didn't truly understand it, but they understood the principle of partnership. And then they went further, and a little further, and a little further. And they came to a clearing. I wish I could describe this to you, dear ones. They came to a clearing, but it really wasn't a clearing. It looked like a clearing. And when those travelers, those ones who would settle in the West, came to that clearing, every single one of them got wobbly in the knees because of what they saw. Most of them fell down, some of them weeping with what they saw. Some of them touching the ground of what they saw because they couldn't believe what they saw. It wasn't a clearing. It was a road. A very wide road. And when you look left, it stretched all the way back as far as you could see, perhaps even to the east coast. And when they looked the other way, it stretched all the way to the water at the west coast. Clear path. No bumps, no rocks, no trees. And they said, what is this? How could we ever have missed this? Who made this? Who made this? And the settlers, having yet been asked another question, stood tall, looked them in the eye, and they said, you did. But it's been hiding from you all your life. They said, what is the meaning of this? How could this be? And the settlers said, sit down and listen to something you may or may not understand. 
There are layers of reality. Layers of reality. And the one that you have chosen as that traveler is a reality of difficulty. That in your path, there will only be difficulty. This is what you signed up for. This is what you expect when you go to sleep one night and wake up the next. It's difficulty. You know that when you awaken, you'll have to carve through the trees again, only going perhaps a mile or so and then having to rest because it is so difficult. The mud will capture the wheels of your wagon on and on and on. That is your reality. And it is manufactured by you. But there are layers of reality. And they said, welcome to another reality. Dear human, this is your road. This is another reality. It is a metaphor of life. A road is already there that has been hiding all along with no encumbrances. So you can ride your wagon instead of walking it. You can find the things you need. You can travel a distance so much faster, so much easier without the fear, without the encumbrances, without the difficulty, without the drama, without the death. It's always been yours and it's here for you. We could leave it there. But there are some who even turned back then saying it's fake. It's not real. It can't be. And then there were others who said, I want this road. And the ones who they were traveling with never saw them again. Interesting. They probably had gone home to the East Coast for lunch. <laughs> like today you would in an airplane. Tell that to them. That that's what you could do some days, travel from New York to Los Angeles for dinner. That's what it is, dear ones. It's just as amazing to them today. You manufacture the difficulty in your road. Did you hear that? This is your reality because it's what reality was taught. It's the reality of your parents. It's the reality of those who taught you that which is real and not real. And that is the groove you're in. Drama, death, difficulty, trouble. And the sad part is there are so many humans who awaken expecting it. And that reality that you expect will be delivered on time because humans are powerful in their expectation and the change of reality. Cryon, what are you telling us? I'm telling you, you can choose your reality. You can choose not to have drama in your life. You can choose to travel faster without encumbrances. You don't have to move through a forest that would fight you. The planet is in love with you and it'll change the paradigms of your life. You'll live longer. And now is the time that you understand all of that and more. Now is the time. This earth has come to a stop so that you can hear this. And when it starts again, are you going to create another difficult reality? Or are you going to stop and think for a moment, what if he's right? That divinity of yours is very active, old soul. You can change the reality of the past and move into a future you didn't expect right now. Now is the time. This is a parable of a missing road. Astonishing to many, true to all. This is a truth. Someday you will see, even the science show you, that what you think you create, that your path as visualized will be the real path. And then you realize you spent so much of your life expecting bad things and they were delivered right on time. I am cry out in love with humanity. I give you truth. Some things that not have happened yet and will some things you're experiencing right now. Raise from your chairs 
your sofas differently than when you sat down. Ponder these things, for they are all true. And so it is.